You can see pretty clearly here on the end, the alignment what, of this <laughs> and how the, di the thickness of it, it just all comes out just right there. Josh, do I really need your help? <laughs> yeah, you know, I had a pretty good time out here working this weekend, but it wasn't the normal, you know, my comedian friend Josh wasn't here the weekend, so it was just me working. So boring. It, it was a little bit boring. Boring. But I did get a lot of work done. Well, it's Monday morning, and uh, it's not possible for Sarah to be here videoing all the time when I'm out here working. So some of the things that I've done over the weekend, I started out putting my lift strut attach brackets on. Uh, I couldn't get into my regular powder coater for a couple weeks and that, was, that wasn't good. But uh, Josh reminded me of a mutual friend we have, Tim Wilson, that's got a little, a small oven and, and can powder coat. So he did, got them right out for me. These, some of these little pieces that I needed to continue on through the weekend the hinges for the flaps and ailerons and my lift strut attached brackets are the main things that he got coated for me. So when I put these on, they, my wings were set to the fuselage from the factory. So these, these lift strut attached brackets were located. They were just put on with one Clico. They drilled one hole and put one Clico. That's all you need. You just need to know where they go. So to put these on, I had my wings upside down on sawhorses. It's the only way you'd ever want to do it because you drill a lot of holes and some of them you have to drill quite a ways because that uh, stiffener, that extrusion is inside there. So you're not only drilling through the spar, but you're drilling through that extrusion. So you really want the things upside down on the sawhorses. Um, I, I'd start, I always start on the middle of them and I, I drill it and clico that all down and then just start working my way down on both sides when I drill them. Then I take my marker and, and mark around it. You can mark all over these things. It doesn't matter. You take a little acetone, it just wipes right off. Alcohol will do it pretty good, but acetone just absolutely removes your Sharpie marks. So then I knew exactly where I needed to scuff it. And I scuffed inside of this and on my spars. It's a really nice thing if you have an air riveter for this because it's a lot of rivets and they're stainless steel rivets so they're not the easiest popping things. Well, that, that probably took half a, half a day on Saturday getting, getting those all on. And you don't mix up too much high sol. Just try to mix up enough to do one because it takes a while popping all those rivets in there and you don't want the high sol getting thick. If you, if you mix up a whole bunch of high sol and it starts getting thick when you're working on the next one, it might not want to squeeze in and spread out in there like, like it needs to. So you kind of want pretty fresh mix of high sol doing these. I do anyway. After I got the lift strut attach brackets on, my brother-in-law came down and helped me put the wings back on the fuselage because I wanted to work on flaps and ailerons I had my trailing edges on already, most of my leading edges, but to do this, you have to have your trail, I think you have to have your trailing edge on your wing. And I like to have my leading edges on my ailerons and my flaps. They're, but not permanent. You don't want any of those permanent because you're gonna have to, you have to get them out of your way to finish drilling holes and riveting and you gotta varnish all the ribs. There's no way you can varnish all these little ribs in there with the edge on but you want them where they're gonna go. So like on my aluminum edges, I have them where they go and click out in place. I wanna make sure they're where they go, or otherwise you're getting bad measurements. And on the flaps where we use the fiberglass leading edge, I just have them taped on. I put a little paper under my tape because I get tired of the masking tape being hard to get off of things. But you want them so they're squeezed up good on the noses of those ribs. Otherwise, you're not getting a good measurement you know, in between the trailing edge of the wing and the leading edge of the flap. So that's kind of for starters. If you don't make changes, which I, I don't know if I've, I think I built my first airplane where I didn't make changes. All the rest of them, I've always changed things a little bit. Changes make a lot more work. One of those places it makes more work is 
where you put the hinges on the back of the ribs, well, it's not that so much, but it's where you put the control. It's always at a hinge, but it's where you put the control. You have to have a pulley in here for your cable. And just aircraft leaves the high saw off the rib in that area. Because that, that pulley bracket goes right up against the rib. So you can't have high saw in the way. Well, when you put them on a different rib, now you've got to grind off high saw in that area. It's kind of a pain because you want to be really super careful and not be nicking the spar. So I've got a couple places that I had to do that. A lot of the information in the build manual really is pretty good. Um, one thing is the distance from the back of the spar to here, they're wanting to be eight and a half inches. Mine wound up being eight and five eighths because I just felt like that's where my trailing edges were happy and another eighth inch in length wasn't going to hurt anything. And then they give you a dimension to put this hinge from the trailing edge to the pivot of that hinge is 10 inches on the flaps and nine and a half inches on the aileron. So I use a hose clamp and clamp them. It makes it really easy. First, of course, you got to line up where they go this direction. So your flap and aileron are exactly where you want them this way. And once you have that determined, I, I, I just make a little mark, which I've wiped off now, but so I get that direction and then with the hose clamp you just you can pivot it around it exactly in the right spot and then I clamped those on and I never did change those this time in the past I've changed them some this time I didn't and it really worked out well what I what you do wind up changing to, to get where you want is where these hinge plates go on the back of the ribs and there's places, every, everywhere they come through, you, you have to notch it out, you know, out, out of that trailing edge, but, so you could probably do this without the trailing edge on the wing, but I don't like to because I really want to see exactly what I've got. I don't, I don't want to get the thing on and then realize, oh, I didn't account for that. I don't get my full range of motion. So I want it to be as realistic as I can have it so that it turns out right. In, in the build manual, they tell you to do this with a wing upside down. And I've never tried it that way. Maybe it works good for people. But for me, this really does work. I can't imagine an easier way, a better way, a more accurate way than just like this, where I have my fuselage nice and level, not too high, not too low, puts things at a nice working height here. And I can have both wings on the airplane all my flaps and ailerons, I can get everything set, look at it all. One, one thing I find helps me, of course you have to be close and look at everything up close, but I like to get back and, and look at things from a distance because sometimes I see something looking at it like that from that perspective that I wouldn't notice just up close all the time. And it lets me get back and see the whole, the whole wings and all of them on and I like that. Like I say, it just makes it easy to work on too up here like this. With my uh, leading edge that we put on this ailerons, one thing that's really important is the alignment of the bottom of it here. Because what this, the way this works is the pointed edge, when you work the aileron, you're pulling it up because you're wanting to turn. Well, when, you, when it comes up, you want that front leading edge to immediately be in the airstream and it helps you. It helps you out a lot. So if it's too high, it, it takes a little, takes too long and it just makes your ailerons harder. So you want that just really level so it immediately is in it as soon as that aileron starts coming up. So that's, that's kind of what I start with. My, where, where my flaps go is pretty much based on where my aileron winds up because I want them to be the same here, same distance here. So I have to set my ailerons first. I'll have the flaps all on. Like I say, you just loosen up a clamp a little bit and you can, you can move it. You can't on these now because I have riveted everything this morning, but that's... The book calls for 30 degrees <clears throat> up, 30 degrees down, and I've got that. That wound up being about an inch from the nose of my aileron to the back of the trailing edge there on the bottom. It's just about an inch. So I've got plenty of clearance here and it goes all the way up 
In the past, sometimes I've had to take a little material out of the top of the hinges, but going by those measurements in the book where these were located with that nine and a half inches from here and 10 inches on the flaps, I get my full 30 degrees without, without messing with the back of those flap hinges, so that was nice. And then with the aileron set here, it also, the flap came out real good. The book calls for an eighth of an inch in between the nose of the flap and the back of the wing. <clears throat> and I've got a little bit more than that, maybe a quarter, three sixteenths to a quarter, so it, it's good. I measure, I take a tape measure, uh, uh, like a one inch, a nice stiff one inch tape, and measure from the back of my trailing edges to the front spar, and when you turn the tape edgeways, you know, you can see right where it, it, it is on the spar, even though it's a big round thing. And, and that all came out just nice and even all the way down the wing, both wings. So that's the kind of thing that you can do all at once where you have both wings on the airplane at once. I know some people just have a lot more limited space. They don't have a big shop like this and build them in a, a garage where you can't have both wings on. And you can still do it. You just have to, it'd be a little bit harder. You have to pay a little more attention, keep better notes of what your measurements were. So you make them just alike. I like to look, make sure my hinge pins are nice and level before I go to drilling. I mean, it, it takes me a while to do this. I spent most of the day yesterday just getting these where I wanted them. Just lined up, perfectly happy that everything was just right. And then they're all clamped on there, but just one clamp it doesn't hold it all that super tight. So as I drilled all those holes back there in, in those hinge plates, I added a big vice grip C-clamp on each one while I was drilling. I drilled one hole, put a Clico in it, and drilled the other one. You can get the two furthest back holes with the trailing edge on, but to get the other holes, you gotta get rid of the trailing edge. But anyway, I got two of them on each one, so they're, they're not going anywhere, they're not gonna move. And to do that, I use, I have two, Two drills set up, one with about a six inch bit and one with a 12 inch bit. Because the top hole, you can easily get perfectly lined up and get it with the shorter one. But the bottom hole, you can't because it's too close to the trailing edge. So I always, I make sure I'm wearing a glove and you can drill that and you can flex that bit. So you just, you just flex it and you can drill that other hole even though it's only about that far from the trailing edge you can drill it straight across by flexing your bit. So you gotta have a nice long one like that for that part. Once the trailing edge is off, you can finish the rest of them with just a little bitty short drill bit. So if you like, if you like the video, like the video. If you, if you, <laughs> if you like, hit like. Hit like if you like the video. Yeah, if you like this video, hit the like button. Subscribe if you haven't. Yeah, subscribe if you haven't because we'll have more awesome videos than, you know, you'll want to see them too. Um, hit that hit that bell. Oh, hit that, that bell. Get the notifications. Yeah. Boy, that was rough. Yeah, that was super rough. Patreon. We're getting that going. Oh, yeah, right. Patreon. That'll be awesome. It's small now and it's going to just keep growing. We're going to keep adding a bunch of content, like kind of the special stuff that may not apply to everybody, but stuff, the real tricks of getting stuff to do the stuff that we do, get the secret information. Secret information, some of it may be yeah. the top secret. Steve doesn't have any secrets, so I gotta tell him what to hold back because he's just gonna give it away anyway, so. Yeah, I really <laughs> don't have very many secrets, but you know, you gotta have a couple. Yeah, yeah, so that is true. <laughs> <laughs> okay, do we, we really need to still do a good one of that, don't we? No, we need that one. <laughs>